everyone, and welcome to Business Bootcamp. I'm Christy Wright, bestselling author, certified business coach, keynote speaker, but most of all, your bossy big sister here to give you the practical steps you want and the tough love truth you need to succeed. Let's dive in. Today, we're talking about how to build confidence. This is a common question that I'm asked in business and in life. It's one of those things that we all want, but it just feels like we can never quite nail it down. Like, where does confidence come from? Is it a certain personality style, like just the extroverts, just the Enneagram 3s or the Enneagram 7s or the Enneagram 8s? Is it just the certain social butterfly personality that confidence just comes naturally? Or is it something with how you're raised? If you're raised by certain households, certain parenting styles, it builds confidence. And other ones, man, if you have a hard pass, like you just, you don't have a chance. You're you're not going to be able to be confident. Is it the social circles you're in? Does that build your confidence or take away from it? The truth is confidence is a skill that anyone can develop. This is a muscle that anyone can strengthen. And sure, there are a lot of factors that go into how easy or hard it may be for you. And your personality and upbringing and and community that you're around definitely plays into that. But it doesn't completely dictate it. You can actually build confidence yourself. But if you're going to build confidence in your life, you need to know where it comes from. When you know where it comes from, you know what you need to do to build it. So today we're going to talk about four ways to build confidence. When you know where confidence comes from, you can actually take the steps you need to take to build confidence in your life. So here are four ways to build confidence. Number one, doing hard things builds confidence. Don't you know you're not going to build confidence by taking the easy path? If you're just sitting around expecting things to be easy and effortless, you're not going to build a lot of confidence. Because doing hard things, overcoming obstacles and challenges and surviving really difficult situations or doing things when you're scared and you make it through, that is what builds your confidence. It is through the hard path that confidence is built because you realize, oh, I survived that thing. I can do it again. Or I survived that. I can do anything. Think of the example with exercise, right? You're not building muscle when you lift light weights or you go to the easy exercise class. You're building muscle when you lift heavy weights and you go to the really difficult exercise class. Years ago, I had a spin instructor at the YMCA that I loved so much and I would go to her classes religiously and y'all, she was so hard, but that's what I loved about it. When I left, I felt so proud of myself that I just went through that really difficult class and I made it, it built my confidence. It built my sense of pride in myself. I wouldn't have felt that if we went there and just cruised around on our bikes and we barely even had any resistance and it wasn't hard and I didn't sweat. I would have walked out of that class feeling like I wasted my time. I would have been bored. Hard things build confidence. I remember the first time I took all three of my kids to a restaurant by myself. And y'all, I was so nervous. Three kids already is is crazy. For some of you that have lots of kids, I know you think that this is not hard. To me, it's really hard. Three is a lot. And going to a restaurant was so intimidating. And I remember my son Carter one Saturday morning when Matt was out of town, wanted to go to Waffle House. And all the kids like, yeah, 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 Waffle House. Yeah, let's go. I'm like, all right, I can do this. I can do this. I can take all three kids to a restaurant by myself. And I did it. And I survived. And you know what happened when I came home? I was more confident. I was more confident in my ability as a mom and my ability to take them places. I'm like, yeah, okay. I did that thing. We can go places now because you've proved yourself you can do it. Doing hard things builds confidence. You know, a very real example of this for me somewhat recently is leaving Ramsey. That was so terrifying to me. It was so difficult to walk out. It was so hard to obey what the Lord was asking me to do, but I did it and I survived. So when I faced a really difficult challenge with an organization about a year later, a really complicated, difficult situation, I thought to myself, I survived Ramsey. I can handle this. I truly thought that to myself. When things were difficult and negotiations were difficult and there was some conflict that I was facing, and I was definitely the little person in this fight with Goliath. I did not have the money or resources or anything that this organization had. I still thought to myself, no, I survived leaving Ramsey. I can survive anything. My confidence had shot through the roof because I did that hard thing. When you do hard things, it builds your confidence. So if you're going through something hard right now, know that it's going to build your confidence when you make it on the other side of this because you will. So what hard thing have you been avoiding? 
What is that thing that feels intimidating to you? And you're like, no, that's too much. Let me tell you, it might just be the key that unlocks confidence for you. So number one, doing hard things builds confidence. Number two, courage builds confidence. You may not feel super confident at this new thing the first time. Of course you don't. You've never done it before. You don't have proof. You're inexperienced. You don't know how it's going to go. Of course not. That's why at that point, you need courage. You just need to be brave. You just need to decide you're going to do the thing anyway. It's like I've taught you for years. Don't wait until you're not scared to do the thing you want to do. Do it scared. When you do that thing scared, you will build confidence from that courage. The antidote to fear is action. Nothing will silence your fear of doing the thing like doing the thing. So go do the thing. Be courageous. Be brave. You're not confident. So what? You don't need confidence at that point. You need courage. But as you show courage, as you step out in faith, as you do that hard thing and you're brave, your confidence builds because you put your shoulders back and you hold your head high and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did this. You know, I used this example years ago, but I remember being on a playground a long time ago when Carter was little, and there was this other little boy playing with his mom, and he started to get up on the monkey bars, and he was tiny. He, you know, his feet couldn't reach. He barely could reach the monkey bars, but he gets up there and and gets his hands on it. And then he puts one hand in front of the other, swings his little body, gets the momentum to the next bar, and the next bar all the way across the monkey bars. And then he gets a big swing for momentum and jumps off and sticks the landing at the very end. And she says to him, wow. I didn't know you could do that. And he said, I didn't either. And I thought, that's it. That's it. That's how confidence is built. That little boy knows he can do monkey bars now. He is brave. He is courageous. But now he's also confident because he was brave enough to try. How do you know what you're capable of? You do it. You show courage. Whether you have confidence or not, you just try the thing. And even if you fall, you can get back up and try again through courage over and over again. Confidence is built. The first time I walked on a stage, I was scared out of my mind. I wasn't confident. I was courageous. Just like I talked about recently, I just faked it. I faked feeling confident. And over time and with experience, the feelings followed. Now I really am confident speaking. But it didn't start with confidence. It started with courage. You know, another example, a couple years ago, my husband and I were down at our lake house. And it was a rare weekend without the kids where we got to just be adults and go water skiing and go out on the boat and and just have fun and be free. And I wanted to try slalom skiing. And I've I've never done this before. I know how to water ski on two skis, but I'm still pretty much a newbie because I didn't grow up on the lake or anything like that. And so my husband said, you know, the best way to do it is to get up on two skis and then drop a ski. So you loosen your boot on the water ski. And, and, you know, once you get going, you get steady. Then you kind of lift up your foot, see what that feels like. And then You want to lift up your foot, you know, wiggle it out of the boot, lift it up and then stick it behind, you know, place it behind your other foot on the one ski on the singular ski. And so I was like, all right, I'm gonna try it, you know, and so I get up on two skis and and I, you know, had my boot loosened. So I kind of feel what it feels like to lift my foot. And I decide to go for it. I lift my foot out, place it behind my other foot and then a crash. And I hit that water hard, man. We were going fast. So I tell my husband, you know, come back again. And I, I go again, put my ski back on, get up on two skis, lift my foot up. And then I go for it, stick it behind the other ski and then just fall, fell flat on my face. I did this three or four times. But by the fifth time, I went for it and I stuck it. I stayed up. I screamed out loud. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing it. And I'll slalom ski. I've been slalom skiing for years now and I love it. It's so much fun. I love it so much more than two skis. But I never would have been able to know that I love this thing had I not been courageous to try. What's so cool about that first weekend when I got up and was able to stay up and slalom ski is the whole rest of the day. The whole rest of the day, that's the only thing I could think about. So the only thing I could think about was how I skied on one ski, how I did this thing I didn't know that I could do. I'm not going to be a famous water skier. I'm not going to make it to the Olympics. We were in Limestone County, Alabama, where zero people saw me and I didn't post about it on Facebook. There was no awards or recognition for this accomplishment but it made me feel confident in me. Because when you do something you didn't know you could do, when you're courageous and you survive that thing or you try that new thing, when you show courage, your brain's next logical thought is, what else can I do? What else am I capable of that I might not even be aware of? And you start dreaming bigger dreams and you try for bigger things and you go for bigger goals all because you were willing to try. Because you were willing to be courageous and try something new. Over time, you will build confidence. 
but it starts by being courageous. Number three, experience builds confidence. We talked about this recently when we talked about fighting against the imposter syndrome. But when you look at your experience, you have confidence because you have proof. Fear can't torment you with the terrifying possibilities of what's going to happen if you do it because you've done it and you've got proof and you survived. And if you did it before, you can do it again. So this looks like showing up again and again and again. It means sticking with the thing, even if you mess up, even if you make a mistake, even if you bomb, you get up, you dust yourself off, you don't let that failure or that setback define you, and you try again and again and again. The most successful people in business and in life just don't freaking give up, y'all. They don't let failures or setbacks keep them down. They come back again and again and again. You will never get experience and get confident in a certain area if you give up the first time it's hard or the first time you mess up. Y'all, I remember a speaking event that I had when I had been a speaker for about six months. So I was really new and I bombed. It was awful. It was humiliating. I wanted to crawl under the table. I wanted to disappear. I cried the entire six hour drive home in my rental car. And I told myself, never again. I will never speak publicly again. I will never do that again. I will never put myself back out there. I will never face that embarrassment again. Never again. Thankfully, I didn't listen to that voice. Thankfully, I decided to dust myself off, get back up, get back out there, get back on the horse, and try again. And I have had over a decade of professional speaking because I was willing to try again. You will never get experience if you give up easily. You will never get experience if you give up when things are hard, when someone intimidates you, when you make a mistake, when you embarrass yourself, when you put out a bad product or a bad YouTube video or a bad podcast. You just try again and again and again and again. Get back up again. Go again. Try again. Just don't freaking give up. If you will do that, you'll gain experience, lots of experience, years of experience, decades of experience. And through that experience, you will have unbelievable confidence. Because man, it's not your first rodeo. You have been there. You have done that. You've got the t-shirt. You have seen some things and survived the things. And when you have seen and survived some things, you've got confidence. But you got to be willing to stick with it to get that experience. Experience builds confidence. Stick with the thing. Show up again and again and again and again. And when you do over time, that experience that you stand on will give you confidence. And then number four, faith builds confidence. There are some amazing scriptures about confidence, but I want to share just a few with you because these give me hope and confidence and build my faith. I love how Hebrews 10.35 says, Do not throw away your confidence, for it will be richly rewarded. Do not throw away your confidence. What has the Lord told you about yourself? What has he told you about your future? What has he told you about your calling or your business or your gifts? I know when things get hard, it's easy to get insecure. I know when the road is more challenging or takes longer or costs more than you wanted it to, it's easy to doubt the promise or the call of God. Listen to these words from Hebrews. Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Your confidence was never in you. It was never in what you could do anyway. It was in the call on your life and the God who called you. Do not throw away that confidence. It will be rewarded. I also love how Hebrews 11 one says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is confidence. What is faith? It's confidence. It's confidence in what you hope for. It's the heart behind my other podcast, Get Your Hopes Up. God tells us, commands us, calls us, and created us to have hope and confidence. That's faith. Confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. You don't see how this can work? Okay. It's, you may not. This is a faith walk. That's what faith is. God shows you the next step when you're ready to take it. He doesn't show you the next 10 steps. You don't have to have everything figured out to be confident because your confidence is not in you and your plans and resources anyway. It's in the Lord. It's in the one that called you, the one that is infinite, all powerful, has unlimited resources and unlimited creativity about how he can arrange things in your life to get you to be where he wants you to be. You want true confidence, unshakable confidence, 
confidence that does not waver like the wind that blows all different directions. That confidence comes from your faith. That comes from something so much bigger than you, so much more unshakable than you. I know you and I, we've got a roller coaster of emotions. I get it. I have highs, lows, good days, bad days. There are days when I feel on top of the world and days when I'm like, why am I even doing this? I don't even think I can do anything. Our emotions are fickle. The Lord is not. Remind yourself of where your faith comes from. Remind yourself of where your confidence comes from. It doesn't come from you anyway. It is rooted in a foundation that could never be shaken. You want real confidence? Faith in the Lord gives you confidence. All right, y'all. These are four ways to build confidence. I want to do a quick recap for you so you can actually put this into practice into your life, okay? Number one, doing hard things builds confidence. When you survive that hard thing, you're going to have more confidence. Number two, courage builds confidence. Nothing will silence your fear of doing the thing, like doing the things to go do the thing. Be courageous. Start with courage. Number three, experience builds confidence. Show up again and again and again over time, and then you have proof that you can do it. That will build your confidence. And then fourth, and the most important of all, faith builds confidence. Our confidence is not in ourselves anyway. It's in the God who created us and called us and takes care of every detail of our lives. That faith and that confidence can never be taken away. All right, y'all, that's it for this week's episode and the end of season one for Business Bootcamp. We will be back in the fall with the practical steps you want and the tough love truth you need to succeed in business. I'll see you then.